Good morning. It's Sunday, guys. Um, I wanted to talk about a few things in this video. Uh, get yourself a cup of tea. And, um, you know, if you've got 20 minutes of your time, uh, probably well spent listening to uh, a bit of a discussion on a few things that are affecting us all right now around the world. And, uh, you know, it's okay to talk about these things. I always say this, but unless, you know, we're prepared to acknowledge them, take things on board, and then do something about it, that's the only way we're going to stop things like this taking place. Um, I want to talk about misinformation, disinformation. You know, a label that people like me are getting tarnished with a lot and, um, you know, having re videos removed for talking on certain subjects. And, uh, you know, this is something that's been going on quite some time now. I mean, I, I didn't want to believe the fact that they could shadow ban you on YouTube, deliberately stop people coming along and... Um, you know, subscribing to you. I mean, we've I've seen them being unsubscribed. They've told me that they've been unsubscribed. Uh, my videos haven't appeared on their new watch list or they haven't been alerted by them. You know, and uh, I'm probably one of the smallest YouTube channels that has took uh, the same amount of time as crocodiles to evolve on this planet. So, you know, nevertheless, it hasn't deterred me. I still want to talk about things that are wrong and right. And I think that you are more enough intelligent to understand and, and agree with me on some of these things. So, you know, with regards to misinformation and disinformation, you know, I think the video that I did a couple of days ago was a classic example of that, where we used OpenAI uh, 4.0, the artificial intelligence app that you can download on your phone. And we asked it the simple question, and which is naturally CO2 being put into the atmosphere. It come back 770 tonnes. And uh, we asked it how much mankind was put, being put into the atmosphere. It said 36 tonnes a year. So clearly the natural CO2 that goes into the atmosphere uh, through degassing of oceans, land and volcanic activity puts a considerable amount more into the atmosphere, around 22 times more than what we do. But their, their excuse here is, hold on, the 770 tonnes that gets put into the atmosphere naturally is part of a perfectly balanced cycle. However, the 36 gigatons that man puts up into there destroys that cycle. And, it, you know, that's something that the system can't handle just that 36 gigatons that we put in there. And therefore, for that reason, we've imbalanced it, the, the carbon cycle. That is their, um, their argument here. And I find that hilarious. Uh, I don't think there's any solid science supporting that at all. In fact, I know there isn't. Um, for you to blame human beings for putting something 22 times less into the atmosphere and it's still amounting to, you know, the total amount, let's say the, the man-made and the natural, it's still a trace gas, less than 0.5%, not even 1% guys. And yet that little bit that we put in there is the critical uh, point that is surpassed. And for that reason, we've triggered global warming. You know, I could argue a lot of things on this uh, using the Milankovitch cycle, 100,000 year cycles. We see the CO2 rise after the warming has taken place. So CO2 is not the trigger that causes the warming. Uh, you know, the warming happens naturally because of the Milankovitch cycle that we're in. That's what gives us interglacial periods for about 12,000 years. That's what we're at the end of now. You know, your climate organisations um, and societies and universities are not being allowed to talk about this because you know there would be arguments you know legitimate arguments to counteract what the mainstream and legacy media are talking about and getting back to um, you know things like Anthony Fauci he knew um, Covid was funded by the USA and knew uh, it was a gain of function virus created in Wuhan laboratory, not something that came from a bat cave and found its way into a wet market. Do you remember at the beginning of the pandemic, these were the things that was telling us. Um, Anthony, Anthony Fauci covered it all up and he knew he was, he was doing it. And yet I think that guy still got his job. You know, th this is the sort of thing 
that needs to stop when somebody has made a huge mistake. Because the reason why they wanted to cover it up, because in 2012, gain of function viruses was banned in the United States. And that's why they moved the research and the facilities over to Wuhan, that, that virology department. And of course, it killed millions of people. This was something that came as a result of studies of bioweapons not something that was naturally found in a bat cave that found its way into a wet market and then uh, you know, spread around the world. This was something that left the laboratory by the people that were working at the laboratory and it should come as no surprise that the first people that died of COVID were the people that were working at that laboratory and yet they covered it up. And this is what I'm talking about. You know, there's two, um, you know, this is misinformation, deliberate misinformation and disinformation and they're using uh, Nazi tactics now to protect themselves against uh, ridiculization by you know even small scientists like myself I think I know why they go after me is because I am a scientist and I, I am therefore credible to them and they're the ones that they want to target more than just the average person talking about such things because you know I have studied biology and I have um, you know, academic transcripts that allow me to talk about the subject. You know, I've passed a certain level where I'm allowed to talk about some subjects. You know, we did uh, mutations of corn when I was at university in Reading. You know, we, we microwaved, just simply microwaved corn for a few seconds and then grew it and then studied through just that microwaving, you know, the jostling of the um, structure of the uh, corn seed and the, all the uh, information encoded in the RNA there, um, at what, what would be the effects of that? And of course, it was noticeable even with corn seed. So, you know, I, I believe I do have, uh, not, not, I'm not a virologist, but I do have some knowledge of, you know, uh, gene mutations. And that's exactly what they did. They isolated certain genes from one and added it to another and it was for a gain of purpose. And that's why we ended up with the trouble that we did. But, but look, talk about misinformation and cover-ups. We had the Prime Minister throwing parties whilst people couldn't visit their people, their relatives that were dying in hospitals. You know, uh, pensioners in their 80s that had lived all their lives together with the partners that couldn't see the partner during the last moments of the death whilst Boris Johnson was having a great time with his pals, you know, at the expense of the British public and to the misery of those people, you know, that found themselves in them situations. We're talking millions of people around the world. And, um, you know, these are the things that we've got to stop, unfortunately. When people make mistakes, you know, they should be fired. But in this day and age, we see them make the mistakes and keep the jobs afterwards. You know, when people send through their um, actions banks bankrupt you know uh, they should be fired and the bank should be allowed to collapse but no we get these bail-ins from the governments now protecting you know the elite people or what it seems like the rich people and they seem to be getting the bailouts whereas the person that has a small business and this has been the case over the last few years on the back of that pandemic that had to shut down I had some terrible stories with regards to that where people were just about to start the business and that's the most costly part of any starting of a business is getting it ready to go and at that point there was a lockdown enforced and of course in this one particular circumstance this person that set up the restaurant to go it was their dream you know secured half a million pound on their home and all the other assets and you know went bankrupt the minute they announced the uh, lockdown I don't think they even managed to get the restaurant ready uh, to open that door, but it was very close because the kitchen had cost so much to kit out. So, you know, these are the things that we're, we're talking about. You know, they're, they're pointing the finger at us. And as I've said this before, you know, the truth is always 180 degrees away from what they are leading you into that direction. If they say it's north, it's safe. If they say it's hot, it's cold. And like, you know, COVID-19, they said it came from a bat cave and found its way into a wet market. We all remember that. That is what they said. But really, this shouldn't have even been allowed to get off the, off the ground because, you know, gain of function was banned in 2012. It was moved to China, uh, the Wuhan 
uh, viral departments and you know gain of function was practiced there and the outcome of that was the escaping of COVID-19 to the rest of the world. You know what still makes me laugh to this point in time is that a lot of the shops, the doctor surgeries in this co country, uh, you can still see the remnants of these stickers where it said, you know, stand six foot apart. It's like the virus knew. You know, I've got to say, Gerald Salenti is great at talking about things like this, but it's true, it's right. You know, stand six foot apart because the virus knows that you're, you know, standing six foot apart and therefore it'll avoid you. It wouldn't have stopped anything. If something is an airborne virus, you cannot stop it. One sneeze could spread you know, 40 square metres. And that is why when these people are working in virology departments, they're in hazmat suits with clean air being sent and filtered into them suits so it doesn't, um, so it creates a positive pressure. So the air that they breathe inside the suit is uh, clean and it's always outgassing clean air into the environment. So if it had been a negatively um, pressured suit, you know, then it would be absorbing the, the virus into the through the little tears and gaps, even in a hazmat suit. So these masks, they told us all to wear. And, um, you know, it basically wouldn't have worked because there's little air gaps all around these masks. It was just a joke. And yet they made it law, you know, they made it law that you couldn't go into, you know, um, uh, spaces where there was a lot of people without a mask. That's how ridiculous it was. And these masks, if you read the instructions on them, do not offer protection for such airborne viruses. Uh, you know, the only way you would get um, protection from an airborne virus would be from a hazmat suit that was positively charged with air inside it, clean and filtered. But, you know, why I'm talking about this is because these things are going on. And, uh, you know, organisations like United Nations uh, the European Union, through their policies, are destroying this world at alarming rapid pace. And I've been trying to put my finger on, you know, how to describe the, the situation that we live in right now. The system that is in place, I think, can only be described as a socialism hybrid system uh, where, you know, the government have way too much authority. And, you know, if we just, you know, I could, I could use lots of examples like here in the UK, the farmers have got um, problems, not with just the subsidies like the rest of them in Europe, but, you know, dealing with um, policies that relate to tuberculosis, uh, tuberculosis, sorry, um, you know, with regards to that being spread by badgers. And then you've got avian flu. And, you know, I don't know, but um, this could have come from the same place. As um, for all we know, I'm mean, there's no I'm not I'm not suggesting that is I'm you know I've got to be careful here because we know what they're like uh, the YouTube police on these matters. It could have come from the same places where COVID did, and I don't think that that uh, was naturally occurring as well. But the but the the tuberculosis issue is that farmers can't do nothing about badgers being on the land with tuberculosis. They can't remove them. They can't call the numbers of badgers at the moment because it's banned. You can't touch them. And uh, if you do interfere with the badger set, which is its home, basically, it's stuck in the uh, hedgerow or whatever it is, uh, there's a £40,000 fine. But if your cattle are found to have uh, tuberculosis or a certain amount of numbers, I believe, then they will not get slaughtered. And some people have lost, you know, tens of thousands of pounds through losing the herd. Um, you know, to I believe companies like DEFRA that have to come along and, you know, manage the slaughter, manage the removal. And I think it's all at the cost of the farmer as well, as losing, you know, the uh, 1,000 to 2,000 pounds worth of cattle each. So it comes at a great cost to them. So, and you know what? We should be more uh, engaged in protecting our farmers because they're the ones putting the food on our tables. You know, when you go to the supermarket, you know, it's only because someone was getting up on a farm probably at five o'clock in the morning to get that harvest in so that you would have it on your plate and table, you know, and it would be there in the first place in the shops. Um, <clears throat> just talk about one other thing, um, chat GPT 4.0, um, uh, manufactured from AI Open. You know, I've been... Uh, asking it lots of questions. Apparently its uh, database was closed off in uh, 2023 of April. 
and uh, you know it's only as smart as what somebody has pr programmed it so if someone's thick that's programmed it and of course if you keep asking it questions about co2 and asking it to be specific it does seem to read off the line of the United Nations. That's why I said um, a, moment, a few moments ago that their argument is that the 770 gigatons of CO2 that's in our atmosphere is part of a balanced cycle. That's what, they, that's what the artificial intelligence says and we know where that's come from. It's come from organisations that have programmed it to say that. Or it's, it doesn't, it, oh, that sort of thing, it doesn't self-learn itself. It's incapable of that, it's been shut down. In fact, you know, they call it artificial intelligence. It's not really when you look at everything. You, you have to ask it questions in the right way and mannerism for it to give you a sort of accurate answer. And that's why I went about it the way I did the other day and I showed you the results. Because if you just say, is man responsible for climate change to that AI, it's gonna say yes. And it's going to start showing you evidence that is used by, you know, United Nations and the European Union. But at the end of the day, you know, we are talking about a trace gas. We're talking about a, a multitude of things that are not being talked about. When we talk about the things on our channel, uh, you know, like the real contributors to climate change, real things that do affect our climate. One, the magnetic pole reversal. You won't know that talked about by any climatologist to the grand solar minimum another thing that is not commonly talked about by climatologists and the legacy media and the mainstream organizations and three the returning back to a glacial period of course think about it this is something the third one is really something that should be talked about with climatology and the uh, mainstream organizations and legacy media but they're not that is a big thing you know we have came to the end of an interglacial period which means things get cooler you know we've been uh early farmers for, since the time we came out the last glacial period things really only started to get going for us as human beings twelve thousand years ago and it was the trigger of the warmer climate that allowed us to do that it opened up lands that wasn't open before because there was covered in glaciers and we was able to thrive and move further north. Boy, I don't think people really understand what they've got coming because we're already starting to see, despite what they will say, the rebound of glaciers in the Arctic um, hemispheres of our planet. And it has been showing a trend for the last 12 years now of increase in size. And uh, I think off the top of my head, eight million square kilometers which almost covers the whole of Europe to put that in perspective. And your mainstream media, legacy media, haven't mentioned it. Your climatologists won't talk about it. In fact, we've had Al Gore come out, remember, 2014. Your kids won't see snow. There will be no polar bears because we'll have removed their habitat. That, you know, the, it would have gone. And uh, there won't be no ice caps on the planet. That would be an end to an ice age that we've been in for hundreds of thousands of years if not millions. And Al Gore thought that this could come about in his time. So, you know, we have got some serious problems and we've got a lot of ignorant to the fact of the evidence is already there. These people know the evidence is there, they just won't listen. They're still claiming that we're heating up our planet through just adding 36 gigatons when naturally occurring CO2 goes into the atmosphere at 22 times more than that, 770 gigatons. But it's the bit that human beings put in that makes all the difference. It's clear why that is. Because you can tax human beings if you can blame them for something. Or it justifies the taxation of human beings. But this is one of the biggest you know, scandals in human history, climate change is. And a lot of people are aware of it already and more people need to be aware of it because at some point it will stop you know they are raising over a trillion dollars a year to, su to suppress co2 and change our industries which these are bureaucrats that sit at desks that dream up ideas that have no real knowledge of the real world that we live in and they don't understand through their policies that they create the the destruction they cause to businesses globally and people 
and of course you know they end up resorting to a hybrid socialism system which is suppressing people which is what we're seeing right now and at the moment it's at the level of suppressing information just like it was in 1920s 1930s but what the nazis did <coughs> but they are prepared to take it to the next level where they will interfere in that person's life directly and we've seen that haven't we when people have leaked out information which these organizations thought it was well past the point of a low shot below the belt and they took it to the next step where you know we saw edward snowden you know flee to you know uh russia and you know julian assange be in prison imprisoned in balmarsh in the uk because you know the americans want to extradite him for what he as a as a um you know a reporter was allowed to do in a system where freedom was you know you was allowed to discuss information at any level and share it and impart it with everyone else regardless of that he's in their balmarsh prison for revealing what he did um you know so it just shows you that they will go to the next level of not just suppressing somebody or you know making sure that their subscribers get unsubscribed because their fear of losing the grip on you know the me uh, the public's attention you know they know now and they admitted this at davos and you know, uh they admitted that they'd lost the narrative with regards to capturing of the audience attention or the main public attention and uh you know there was already too much mistrust with you know not just media but government organizations well it should come as no surprise that when they start getting caught out on things like you know taking us to war with iraq killing you know thousands of children i'm not going to talk about adults that was killed as well I'll just you know because it is a sore point when you hear about children being killed you know for the fact that they supposedly had weapons of mass destruction and none was found nobody went to prison for taking countries to war on the back of false pretenses but the result of that was that people did die and you know what what has been achieved by all these wars and conflicts you know they pulled out like you know quicker than british airways of afghanistan we saw that happen last year how fast they pulled out after spending trillions there after leaving billions of pounds worth of equipment there for them for the taliban to take over and after failing to support the 50,000 interpreters that was promised um you know residents in the united states and other countries well the fate of those interpreters ended up being uh, in the hands of the taliban you can imagine what they did and again nobody loses the job over any of these things and we move closer into this socialism system because people are basically allowing it to happen but we do have the power because we are the majority we make up 99.5 percent of the population of the world and we need to get a grips because the policies that are being created by the west at the moment are only harming business and you know the way and well-being of people's lives and we have the power to remove these governments from power uh using you know our democratic rights and i know what you're going to say here we've, we've got no democratic rights look what they're doing with the protests now you're almost considered a terrorist if you protest something needs to be done because doing nothing at the moment leaving uh, a complete and utterly drunk person at the steering wheel of you know these countries is going to result in a crash or even worse in in this scenario it could be a world war three and i think you'll agree we're very close to that with what's going on now in the middle east you know we have to you know make some very hard decisions you know supporting israel is not a good idea because it is fueling conflict around all over the world now you know we're starting to see iraq you know attack, attack american bases there you know and other bases around the middle east they're all being attacked you know we're seeing the british and american ships being fired upon as well as civilian vessels being fired upon in the red sea you know it is 
very quickly getting out of hand. And something needs to be done about it. You know, something should be done about Anthony Fouché lying to everybody around the world and not telling the truth about it. He knew the fact where COVID-19 came from and it's came out now. You know, CO2 and CH4, carbon uh, dioxide and, and um, you know, methane are trace gases. Methane's 200 times less abundant in our atmosphere than CO2. And yet they're closing down farms right now. Can you believe this? They're closing farms down in a time where naturally, because of the uh, position of where we are in the Milenkovitch cycle, land is um, slowly going offline for farmers. And it's not something that happens overnight. This isn't. It slowly happens and it slowly becomes uh, harder and harder to produce that same crop that you could produce, say, 30 years ago in that same piece of land. And it's for a few of the reasons other than just climate shifting. Uh, you know, you, you get a mixture of climate now. You get heavy rains, you get dry seasons. Of course, if you're trying to dry, uh, sorry, if you're trying to grow rice, like, you know, they're struggling in some parts of the United States now to do, then, you know, what mon companies like Monsanto will say, we've got, a, we've, got a, we've got a seed that will fix that problem for you. I wouldn't uh, recommend using that seed. They're trying it on there with, you know, the poorer countries in Africa. And, the, you know, we've seen what they did in Pakistan and, uh, uh, and India and what that led to, you know, the suicide of these people because they lost everything. But I, I just think that that's not a good idea. But to conclude, you know, our land is going offline naturally because of the position of where we are now in that Milankovitch cycle. And, you know, these people in the European Union and the United Nations are going along with it. They're making matters worse. That's why I say, you know, are they human beings? Because only an alien species would destroy, you know, the production of food much needed for the 8 billion of us that are here at the moment. But they want to drive us to, you know, eating fly larvae, artificial meats, 3D printed meats. And who are the companies beyond this? And who are the CEOs beyond these companies? Or who are the main contributing funders for these? It's people like Bill Gates. You know, I don't know what it is that when people get a, a large amount of money, it, it makes them become psychopathic. It makes them feel that, yes, I've achieved such wealth and status now that I can dictate to the rest of the world how I want to see things progress in the future. Well, I listen to Bill Gates. Um being interviewed at the beginning of Dallas and he was talking about a, a woman in Kenya that had mixed bred chickens from colder climates and warmer climates and I knew exactly what he was trying to do he was trying to justify his genetically modified seeds that's all he was trying to do saying it was no different to what this woman done in Kenya with chickens by getting these chickens that were thriving in colder climates and brought them into a moderate climate and then got ones that were thriving in warmer climates, brought them into the moderate climate and to bred them and then we ended up with a super chicken. You know, I, I seen straight through his argument there and I knew why he was trying to justify that story and he knows why as well because he was trying to say it's no different to what we do in the laboratory with seeds by isolating ones that grow in colder environments, warmer environments, wetter or drier environments just the con. We need to stop this, guys. Before it gets to the point as where we've seen this goes already. First of all, if you adapt a socialism, uh, if you adapt that policy, which they have, well, I say it's a hybrid one because it can't be nailed down simply to socialism because there is still a few things that don't fully fit and that's why I say it's hybrid but it is going that way if you allow that sort of thing to thrive in your in your society then things are going to move along the lines of where they did and progress from you know just the withholding of information but next will be not just the burning of literature but the burning of bodies back in Auschwitz you know we don't, this mentality was only 80 years ago 90 years ago on our planet and we haven't evolved that much to lose that instinct 
is that we're still capable of things like that. You know, we're still capable of it. And clearly, you know, evidence of that is, you know, now we know that these wars was done that we've witnessed over the last 30, 40 years that we've been engaged in, you know, the death and destruction of, you know, other people's countries that we've been responsible for and on false pretexts. Who has gone to jail for that? Tony Blair gone to jail for that? Has he been held accountable for the death, destruction that he caused on false pretexts? Where was the weapons? If this is, if he's right, where are the weapons of mass destruction? There was never found. And I don't still to this day know when George Bush stood on um, the rubble of 9-11, the Twin Towers, and said, we're going to go after Saddam Hussein because he's part of this, you know, and that led to the war in Iraq. And then the war in Iraq was said suddenly diverted from you know not being directly linked to terrorism but being you know we've got to stop him because he's going to manufacture weapons of mass destruction he's got mobile bi biological laboratories everywhere no the ones with the laboratories practicing banned gain of function um viruses are you know the the American um, Congress, you know, they're the ones, the money come from them. You know, people like Fuji covered it up, but it's out there now for everyone to see. It isn't some super uh, virologist in a mobile truck in Iraq driving around, like they said. All along, it was them. It's <clears throat> this sort of thing is a misuse of public taxpayers' money. Don't care what country you come from now, because we're seeing this hybrid socialism um, um, governments uh, form all around us. So it doesn't matter if you come from Canada, Australia, New Zealand, uh, the United States. You know, let me tell you this, it was a, and you can find it on YouTube. Uh, there was a guy. He's the Prime Minister, or the President, for Argentina at Davos. I'm surprised why they let him talk the way he did, but he did, and he was right. He was talking about socialism and how, for 80 years, Argentina had to deal with this. And it was only when it cut back on the bureaucracy, the red tape, the policies, that, that, and give back the freedoms to the people that it started to thrive. We haven't recognised that yet because we're still moving close towards not a hybrid uh, socialism society, but we are moving towards that socialism society. And that will be a very dark day when we arrive there. We're not far from it. And the other thing I'm going to say is, you know, we need to start manufacturing again here. We need to pull our, pull our pants up, we really do. If we want to uh, become, uh, you know, back on the block where things happen. What I'm talking about, you know, we've sent all our manufacturing, a lot of it over to overseas because we was exploiting cheap labor and that labor isn't as cheap as what you think now. And even China are trying to export their manufacturing out of China now. That should tell you everything you need to know about this. It was only a short lived profitable business plan by sending your companies to China. Now you're going to, they're, they're looking for, um, you know, countries like India, Pakistan and Africa to invest in because there's the cheap uh, pecking order on the block. You know, they are going to go now down to those levels and it will be, it will be short term. In fact, it'll happen 10 times quicker this, this way, this time round now because, you know, we can um, mechanize a country and modernize a country very quickly quicker than what we could uh, many years ago because of the level of technology. So this will be a short lived thing, but it's an artificial plan. What we need to get back to doing in the UK and in America and Canada and New Zealand, Australia is manufacturing. You know, we need to abandon this service based industry that we've got because it doesn't produce anything. And if you're not producing anything, you're not going to be earning anything. That's why China had the power race of the world. It's now losing it. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I don't know whether it's to do with the fact now that the population actually in decline now. Something that Elon Musk is very worried about. Anyhow, 
he seems to think that we need to double the amount of people on the earth uh, in order to keep new ideas uh, coming and flowing and, and um, you know, business being profitable. I, I, I won't argue or any, either way with that. I just think that if we don't do something about this hybrid socialism platform that we've been forced upon, and if we don't do something about, you know, getting rid of or at least putting in their place organisations like the World Health Organisation, the United Nations and uh, the European Union, these unelected organisations, you know, that I've heard, I don't know how true it is, but um, the World Health Organisation wants 5% of the medical budget or the, um, you know, the, the, that part, the, the budget of the, the uh, GDP of the country that goes to things like NHS, they want 5% of that. And they let us down, didn't they? The beginning of the uh, pandemic. Do you remember they said it wasn't a pandemic? And then they said it was. And I think, I, I, I will agree with uh, uh, Donald Trump. He said, you ain't getting any money. You've let us down, you ain't getting the money. But obviously, um, Biden has reinstated that forum. It's, uh, it's a club for the rich and the elite, and we ain't in it. And we do have the power to stop them because we are the ones in the majority here and they ain't and their corruption's got to stop and I think you know just as it would be for us you know justice needs to be done for them as well we'll see where this all goes guys meanwhile we're going to do tomorrow uh, Monday morning uh, Earth Alpha at a glance. We'll have a look at uh, how things are changing around our world with the things that we cover on our website, poleshiftnews.com. And at the end of the month, we'll take the latest magnetic pole position for you. And I'll say at this point, you know, big thanks to those that have been helping us, even though things are really tight for a lot of people. But I will mention the link there. Hopefully, you know, you, uh, you do see the importance of some of the things that we do and some of the research that we try and undertake. Um, so you know I'll mention the link down there in the description where you can uh, help support us okay enjoy the rest of your morning uh, try not to worry too much about these things I'm sure there is a silver lining in the clouds at the end at some point in time so I'll say what I usually do as always bye for now